Hi, welcome to the podcast for when the curves line up describing the 2024 heliacal rising of Sirius. Text by Jeffrey L. Hunt. Summer's midpoint occurs near the time of Sirius' first morning appearance or heliacal rising. Despite the description by some writers, Sirius is not especially bright at the heliacal rising. It appears through the beautiful colors of mid-twilight in the east-southeast, slowly fading from view as twilight brightens. The following mornings, the star is higher in the sky and easier to locate at the same time interval before sunrise. For sky watchers, the actual sighting of the celestial event is important, not just predicting when the event occurs. The theoretical date of the first appearance can be calculated, the visual sighting is compounded by weather and local geography. Sirius Heliacal Rising gathers the most interest for the readers of these articles and its connection with Egyptian calendars. Sirius is sometimes known as the Nile Star as its first appearance occurred at the time of the annual rainy season that flooded the river to start the agricultural season. For 2024, the following table, based on astronomer Jean Mu's equations, shows the predicted heliacal rising for Sirius for selected northern hemisphere latitudes. Latitude, north, date 10 degree July 17 20 degree July 24 30 degree August 1 40 degree August 10 41.85 degree, Chicago, August 12 50 degree August 20 60 degree September 2. Begin looking for it at 50 minutes before sunrise a day or two before the predicted date. Use a binocular as necessary. The heliacal rising occurs on the first day the star can be seen without the binocular. Sirius is part of an informal pattern known as the Winter Triangle, including Procyon and Betelgeuse. The shape is nearly an equilateral triangle. Finding Betelgeuse and Procyon shows the triangle scale and helps locate Sirius. It should be noted that for Southern Hemisphere sky watchers, Sirius is still in the evening sky during late fall and early winter. Like the familiar Arcturus, Vega, and Capella in the Northern Hemisphere, Sirius stays in the sky for long periods when viewed south of the equator. Sirius is still in the Western evening sky when it makes its first morning appearance. From 30 degrees south latitude, Sirius first appears on June 22, while it continues as an evening body until July 11 when it is lost in evening twilight. Some writers and emailers state that for ancestral Egyptians, Sirius' first appearance began a new year and they make absolute statements on the date. This is oversimplified. The Egyptian calendars were complicated and changed across time. What follows here is a quick look at the calendar. I encourage those who want to learn more to dig into the expert studies of the ancient Egyptian calendar. Some records indicate that the new rulers started a year on the first day they came to power. A citizen might only see one or two kings during a lifetime, so the calendar might be reasonably consistent. During Egyptian dynasties, Sirius Heliacal Rising occurred during the rainy season in the lower Nile River. Remember that the river flows from south to north. It helped signal the beginning of an agricultural cycle. Two calendars were in effect. One was 365 days long, without a leap year. Assuming Sirius marked the beginning of the new year, the civil servants apparently knew about the need for a leap year, but they did not apply it. Without a leap day, the rising Sirius begins to slip in the calendar one day every four years. The beginning of the new civil year soon did not coincide with the date of the first appearance. Today, if leap year is not applied, seasonal festivals do not match with the traditional months. In the Northern Hemisphere, the months that we know as the cold months, December, January, and February, would occur during the hot times of the year. Without leap years the entire cycle resets Sirius Heliacal rising to the date of the new year in 1460 years. The civil servants had to track this difference in their records, an odd practice, since they apparently knew that the civil calendar could be corrected by adding a day every four years. When writers simplify that Sirius' first appearance started the Egyptian New Year, it is a simplistic statement. Sure, maybe at times, but not always. The second calendar used the moon's lunation, that is easily recognized by everybody. To account for the moon's cycle that is 29.5 days long, 
months were 30 days, with three seasons, inundation, or rainy, winter, or growing, summer, or harvest. Five days were added to extend the year to 365 days. The month began on the day following the last appearance of the waning crescent moon. Festivals occurred at various months and the related offerings to the gods were specified. This worked for an agrarian society. The calendar was reset easily with the appearance of Sirius so that the seasons of flooding, planting, and harvesting were consistent with the weather patterns. The new year started at the beginning of the next month after the heliacal rising. Sky watchers recognized an annual cycle based on the sun and stars that was 365 days long. While the lunar cycle was used by the larger population, the civil calendar, based on the summer solstice and the zenith passage of the sun, was used by the civil servants, but the sun did not appear directly overhead for all of the kingdom. Another avenue was needed to begin the year. When the Ptolemies came to power about 305 BCE, they attempted to align the culture to Greek practices and decreed a leap day that was not implemented. Sirius Heliacal Rising was proclaimed to occur on the 271st day of the year. So, at some point Sirius did not open New Year's, especially when a new ruler could declare when a new year began. It seems, though, that the calendar based on lunar phases, restarted at the next new moon following Sirius Heliacal Rising, was the consistent mode of keeping track of the year's passings. This year, attempt to view Sirius at its heliacal rising. During morning twilight, venture to a spot with a clear horizon to search for the star's first morning appearance at your home latitude. Thank you for listening. Please read the articles at whenthecurveslineup.com.